Hello, my name is Steve Seven. I'm the author of this book, Alchemy Unveiled, Self-Initiation into the Ancient Mystery Tradition. Chapter 1. Introduction to Spiritual Alchemy. This book is based on the premise that people have an instinct for personal development, and that this is the central pivot around which all our other instincts revolve. It can be seen as the motivating factor in higher human endeavors, and it informs and colors the world's religious and philosophical traditions. If one accepts the evidence for the evolution of each species, then it makes sense that this is steered by an inherent drive within each member of that species for personal development. This is C.G. Jung's archetype of the higher self, or Nietzsche's Ubermensch, or Superman. It is seeing the real in Plato's cave analogy where people can be freed from their prison of knowing only the mere shadows of a reality. This is the meaning of the phoenix who is reborn out of its own ashes and a host of other death and resurrection symbols such as the solve et coagula and the alchemical cauldron of transformation. The history of alchemy, alchemy is intimately tied to that of chemistry and many conventional scientific terms and operations came from the art. But there is also a deeper level of meaning beneath the surface, where psychological processes are represented by the material symbols. The action of turning base metal into gold can be read as an analogy, a roadmap for self-awareness and self-realization. This has been variously called enlightenment, wholeness, salvation, etc., it is this focus that is emphasized with the qualification spiritual alchemy. Alchemy evolved in secret, and there was never a uniform exposition from the various schools that had a hand in its development. Much of this confusion was a deliberate strategy on behalf of the adepts to keep the mystery element intact. The present work is a modern rendering of some of the classic symbols and procedures into a unique working model for use by the contemporary magical practitioner. No apology is given if the system appears pared down or incomplete when compared to the highly elaborate schema formally presented. The, import the important thing to bear in mind is that it works. Our inner odyssey is called, for good reason, the hero's journey. Here we find our authentic soul, below the layers of cultural conditioning. The monsters and sirens we meet along the way are attempts from our ego, ego to stifle our growth with fear or complacency. That this system explains the psychological elements of the transformation experience does not mean that this entire project is reduced to a merely biological or neurological level, nor that there is no room for the individual soul. The word psychology comes from the Greek psyche, which means not only mind, but also life energy or soul. It is with the same depth that the word is used here. It is a typical Western dualism to separate spirit and matter or mind and body, but this is a mistake. The soul is the meeting place of the universal spirit with the material plane. The physical aspects of human beings stand together with the deeper spiritual features of our nature and they are treated here as being interconnected. The spiritual dimension is not brought down to the level of reductionist clinical science. The boundaries of psychology have been elevated to include many of the most profound transpersonal experiences. A vital concept here is that the individual spirit is motivated by the same drive for evolution that courses throughout the material plane. This can be seen as establishing a material basis within which the non-material element can be nourished and therefore flourish. A question mark is left over many of the mystic dynamics of the process, and it is left up to the individual seeker to find their own answer. Introductory Meditation Throughout this book there will be several meditations and exercises that will form into a series it is important to set apart a specific time each day in a particular place to perform your meditations as a ritual. Most people find it helpful to make their own sacred space, 
either a particular room or area in your house, outdoors in a private section of your garden, or if possible, somewhere near to you in nature, by a river or in the wild, that you can visit each day. Whichever option you take, it will help to personalize your sacred space with your own form of altar. You can include statues and other forms of art that are dear to you. Have candles whose flames can help you not only to relax, but also to concentrate and enter into your own private alternative dimension. These things can evolve as you practice, experiment, and become more experienced. Meditation plays an important role in the transformation process. The reason for this is that the effect of socialization cannot be overemphasized. It has been demonstrated in neurology that our early influences actually form the material structure of our brains. Furthermore, we also know that when we respond to any given situation, that our subconscious has already chosen the answer before we consciously make our decision. This can be seen as literally a spell or even a curse over us by our parents, teachers and society at large. Whatever normal and often unhealthy attitudes and behaviour that we have been exposed to in our formative years will be installed like software in us. Unlike a normal computer, however, the downloads will actually change the makeup of our hard drive so that we are building on the programming. It is a good exercise to take note of how often re we repeat opinions or even simple phrases verbatim from influential people in our life. We are being controlled by subconscious programming and, as alchemists, we need to transform this and regain the reins of our thinking so that we are making autonomous life choices <clears throat> and not following the dictates of what has been laid into us from outside. This introductory meditation is very simple and designed to help reprogram our mind with what will be, for most of us, the innovative concept that we are now in control of our own thinking and subsequent doing. As mentioned, implied in this book is the idea that we have an inherent drive towards self-realization. This instinct is the archetype of the higher self, a concept which can be read here as a synonym for our soul. By its nature, the higher self is outside our conscious apprehension because it is unconscious. The archetypes lie below the social pro programming in our personal subconscious. They inhabit the area that Jung called the collective unconscious. This latter term simply means that we have a bedrock of drives, of drives and propensities that is common to all humans. Given this, the archetypes are also, more literally, beyond us in that they are an inherited aspect of our mind, which is older than us. It came into existence thousands of years ago with the evolution of the first humans. Now I will read the meditation at this point, but it is, this is not in real time. This is to teach you the meditation and the visualization, and you can take this away with you and practice it in your own space, in your own time. In your sacred space, sit quietly with whatever aids you need to deeply relax. If there is a river flowing, this will be a great help. If not, then you can have suitable music in the background. Be aware of your thoughts, but do not hold on to them. Allow them to float away with the sound. Many people find it useful to concentrate on their breath as a means to still their mind. One can also look into a crystal ball, the flame of a candle, or concentrate on a small detail of some artwork. Perhaps creative play will help, slowly drawing in sand or simply pouring water from a jug into a bowl. In Japan, people f perform a ritual of making a cup of tea. The possibilities are endless. As you become fully relaxed, slowly close your eyes and picture yourself walking through a forest. As you follow the path, you see a clearing opening up ahead. When you walk into the glade, you notice an old person, a man or woman is your choice, sitting on a fallen log. You intuitively know that they are waiting for you. This is your higher self. Do not be hasty to talk to the person. If you are like most of us, you would have spent your life ignoring them, and it will, therefore, 
take some time to develop a relationship. In the first instance, merely they acknowledge do, the person and let respond by saying that you that know that you they, know are there they are there. You. And you want to they may turn to face you, they you. may even say hello. If your higher self does not, not acknowledge you, then do not be put off. This is the most likely situation, and it is simply because you have remained for so long aloof. Take careful note of what your higher self looks like. Spend as long as required. Once you feel that your first encounter is sufficient to let your higher self know that you are available for their guidance, then you can slowly bring yourself back to your actual environment. By going through this, you have taken the first step of bringing the transpersonal power of this archetype into your life. We need to be careful here, however. As much as the ar archetype has a power that is bigger than us by the fact that it is part of our inherited mind, so too does our incubating programming because it has also been put into us from outside and by people whom we regarded as authority figures in our life. This is the greatest difficulty on the hero's journey, and we need to test our meditative experiences. The best litmus to discern whether we are being seized by programming or a genu genuine constellated archetype is that the latter will be directing us towards autonomy and independence. Generally speaking, the higher self will not be encouraging us to be one of the crowd happily marching to the tune of the dominant culture. Following directly on from this, the higher self will not be telling us to persevere in unhappy situations. Quite the reverse. It is possible that we can experience a bout of depression and think that we are being attacked by a demon when, in fact, this is just as likely to be our higher self prodding us to change unskillful aspects of our life. Meditation is a 24-hour project. As you go through your daily activities, be aware at all times that your higher self is there with you. Practice feeling their presence next to you. Organize a picnic or bike ride or some other activity that you can share with them. Remember always, you are never alone. Make an effort to talk to them and most importantly, listen carefully for anything that they may say to you. It will slowly change your life by knowing that this spirit guide or guardian angel, if you prefer these images, is constantly there for you, looking out for you, and waiting always to guide you with better, more skillful decisions and responses. If you still feel alone after trying these exercises, don't worry. This is normal. Like everything worthwhile, it will take time. This is just the beginning. The higher, self, the higher self lies in our deepest unconscious, and to fully constellate its energy to the surface of consciousness, we have to clear the path for its journey by healing any buried pain, regrets, and doubts in our personal subconscious. This means that we have to engage with what Jung termed the confrontation with our unconscious.